Flight among insects varies dramatically, from the clumsy to the aerobatic. And unlike most other animals, some insects, like flies, can even hover. Insects do not fly from muscles attached directly to the wings. Instead, muscles changing the thorax cause the wings to flap. Bees' wings may look similar to birds or bats, but the mechanics of flight are very different. Bees actually have really interesting flight mechanisms. Um, most people, when they think about flight, they think of a very direct kind of flight where there's a muscle that pulls on the wings to make them be able to flap their wings. Um, in insects, there's only two orders that really do that, and they're very primitive. One of them is dragonflies and one of them is mayflies. However, most other insects actually have something that's called indirect flight. And what this actually means is that they conserve energy by being able to use other muscles inside their body, and they actually flex parts of their bodies. So the way this works is they have their thorax and they have their wings and their wings are attached to the outsides of their bodies. But inside of them, they have different sets of muscles. They have some that run from top to bottom and some that run parallel through there. And what they do is they press their body this way or this way to move those muscles. And by doing that, that actually allows them to get both the lifting motion, but also to be able to angle their wings at different angles to get different types of speeds or if they need to change their movement very quickly. It also allows them to create a general pattern that creates a vortex underneath the wings that lifts them up as they fly. Bees specifically belong to the order Hymenoptera, and Hymenoptera is one of the fourth largest orders of insects that we have in the world, which is really kind of fascinating. And specifically, Hymenoptera are known for having these membranous wings. That's actually what their name means, is to have these membranous wings. It's kind of like, you think of um, like cellophane or like glass, it, it, it's kind of this crinkly, almost translucent property to it. And the interesting thing is for something that seems so incredibly delicate, it is structurally very strong. When you think about about the fact that many insects, particularly bees, can fly thousands of miles over the course of days to avoid predators, to get through tough spots, and yet it all just looks like very like fine glass that they're going on. We know that bees have been a part of human civilization for a long time and that we've been using a lot of the different products that they have um, going back into Egypt, into uh, early Greek civilizations. And one of the things that we know is that it's not just the honey that people were going after them for. Even though honey is a wonderful source and it's a food and it's a sweetener, but they were also using things like beeswax because it's a really pliable kind of material. And they were also using things like royal jelly, which is something that the bees uh, feed to their queen. They also have a bunch of other resources that we can use from them. We kind of domesticated them, so we made them so that they're easy for us to manage and take care of. If you like this video, be sure to follow STEM in 30 on Facebook and Twitter and subscribe to the National Air and Space Museum's YouTube channel.